Hello, 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 and welcome back to Cook It and Eat It here on Jim Johnston Reviews the World. And today, we're continuing on with our bacon extravaganza. And surprise, surprise, today, you're going to get two, two, two videos for the price of one. So what we have for you today will be bacon-infused green beans and also bacon jambalaya. We're going to get things started, but before we do, let's make a quick run through the ingredients. So, just for ease of creation, we're going to use a pre-box jambalaya. You're going to need a little bit of bacon grease. Uh, you saw that in a previous vin video being rendered. Uh, here is one cup, a little over a cup actually, of um, frozen mixed veg medley. And that has been chilling out and thawing out a little bit. Then we're going to bring back our fire roasted green chilies from our chicken thighs video. You're going to need a pull pack of turkey bacon or regular bacon, whichever you prefer. I like to go turkey whenever I can. Bag of cut green beans or approximately three quarters of a pound of fresh. A little bit of butter spray. Definitely going to want some slivered almonds. Uh, if you don't have those, grab you a nice big handful of whole almonds if you have them. Put them in a baggie and take out some of those frustrations and crunch up. All right, W sauce, liquid smoke for seasonings, Italian seasoning blend, garlic powder, cilantro leaves, that salt-free Southwest seasoning I'm always going on about, cayenne pepper, black pepper, and then, and I'll link it down below, you're going to want to have some fresh pickled sweet onions. If you don't have those, just use the equivalent amount of fresh sweet onion, julienne and julienne's half, and then uh, all you really got to do to cheat this is get you a nice uh, vinaigrette, preferably a basil vinaigrette, and marinate the onions in uh, about a tablespoon spoon of that vinaigrette just to add some flavor and then I'm gonna to toss in some garbanzo beans because I got a little bit left from the previous can but if you don't have those no big deal all right before we get started first things first go ahead and break out your handy dandy skillet or whatever you like to cook your bacon in and go ahead and brown off this whole package of bacon your whole package of bacon whatever it is go ahead and brown it off um, try not to get it too crispy and we'll be right back to get things started with our already brown bacon all right, it's cooking time. We have our pre-browned up bacon. What we're gonna need for this recipe is two piles. For the green beans, we need a pile of six bacon strips. And for the jambalaya, we need 12. And it just so happens that this pack of bacon that I used had exactly enough for six and 12 after, um, I don't know what happened, but two, two pieces of bacon disappeared during the cooking process. No idea what happened. So anyway, uh, you wanna chunk these up. And the best way to chunk up your pre-cooked bacon is with a pizza roller. And you just rolled through them. And this is honestly the best way I've found to cut up bacon, be it pork, turkey, or otherwise. Put those bad boys in. And here's our pre-sliced portions of turkey bacon. Again, when you cook that bacon, you want to cook it so it's browned off, not too crispy. As much as I like crispy bacon, don't need it to be cr too crispy for this recipe. Uh, it will cook more in the in the process, and in the case of the beans, it will probably end up firming up a bit more. Okay, we're gonna do this kind of intermixed, but kind of separate. So first things first, it takes the longest to cook. We're gonna get a jambalaya started. Go ahead and open up your jambalaya pack, and if it's in an inner bag like this one is, go ahead and knead it and try to break up that uh, that seasoning cube at the bottom. That'll make life easier for you. Uh, the package calls for two and a half cups of water. We're gonna cut that down in this recipe to two and a quarter uh, with the vegetables we're gonna be adding, making up for the other quarter. We're gonna want just a dab of pre-rendered real bacon grease, a tablespoon of butter. I forgot to mention that in the open. Keep this off the heat for just a second and I'm gonna add our water all real quick like. There we go, back onto the heat. And this is solid, medium, high heat. Let's go ahead and add in our mixed veg. Three dashers of W sauce, one, two, Three, eight drops of liquid smoke. Then I got under a quarter can of garbanzos here from a previous recipe that I just wanted to use them up. They're already drained, so I'm gonna dump those in. If you want garbanzo beans in this recipe, I'd say go ahead and add a full half can, or you can omit them. All right, we got our veggies in, we got our butter in, our water, and then we're gonna go on with our chilies. For now, I'm just gonna add a couple forkfuls because I do want to save a tablespoon for our beans, a little less than a tablespoon. After we do the beans, we can add the rest of that, no problem. About a half teaspoon of cayenne. Yeah, we're making this one kind of hot. Half teaspoon of our Southwest blend. A teaspoon of garlic powder. A teaspoon of Italian seasoning blend. It does a lot more than just Italian food. And then a teaspoon of cilantro. And a teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper. 
give that a quick stir and clamp on your lid and we'll bring this menagerie to a boil just into a boil not full roaring or anything and then we will add the actual rice and the onions all right we went from nothing to a full roar and boil pretty quick there. So we're ready. Give it a stir. It already smells wonderful without even everything else in it. We're going to add in about a third of a cup of our pickled sweet onions. A uh, link to this recipe will be in the description below. And I drained them the best I could, but not super duper good. And then we will need another third of a cup of these for the other recipe. And then we'll go in with our actual jambalaya mix and seasoning. You can see sometimes that... Uh, that flavoring component that comes from the store is in a big block, so that's why we kind of needed it a little bit first. And we're gonna stir this to combine, clamp our lid on, set this to medium high heat until it comes back to a boil, give it a stir then, and then turn it back down to a nice simmer. Now that our rice is doing its thing, let's get our beans started. And I got my handy dandy skillet thing here, and I wanna heat it up. I wanna get it nice and hot because we're kind of stir frying, kind of stir frying here. And that's how you have a, you know you have a nice hot pan when you give it a squirt. And it's caught in a few seconds. So first things first, we're going to add another, just a dollop of our real bacon grease. And then we're going to go in first with our almonds and toss those. And this is a quarter cup of slivered almonds. Again, if you don't have slivered, don't want to buy slivered, but you have regular almonds, just crush them. And we're going to give this a second to heat up and toast those almonds. Uh, all right, now you might be thinking, Jim, you forgot the bacon and the jambalaya. No, I didn't. We're gonna wait till this is soaked up about half of the water to add the bacon. But in the meantime, let's make these beans. So you're gonna go in with your whole bag of beans. If you're using uh, frozen like this and they've kind of thawed out on the counter waiting for you to cook them, just nip off the corner of the bag and drain out any excess liquid. So you don't get too much hissing and popping in your face. We're gonna go with our third of a cup of onions, greens, and then about a tablespoon of this hot pepper. I'm gonna give this a quick toss. This already smells great and it's just getting started. Those almonds toasted in that bacon grease just enough to put out a beautiful nutty smell. And as you can see, our hissing and popping has already stopped. So I'm gonna go up higher. I'm gonna put the spurs to this skillet. We're gonna dust in about a half tablespoon of garlic powder. Excuse me, half teaspoon of garlic powder. I always do that. Someone's gonna really mess up their food one day. About a quarter teaspoon of our Southwest seasoning. Very light dust dusting, less than a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. About a teaspoon of cilantro leaf. Give it a toss to combine. If this is hissing and popping on you bad, throw your screen on it and give that about three minutes and then we'll be back. Okay, our pan's gotten nice and hot now. Let's take a look and check on our rice. I'm actually gonna cut this down just a little bit at this point. And that is at the point where we want to stir in our bacon. Again, that was 12 rashers of turkey bacon. Chunked up, incorporate that, let it chill. Screen came in handy there, didn't it? Pull our screen off of this one. Give this a toss and off camera, I did go ahead and grind in about a half teaspoon of black pepper. You guys don't know how many times I've had to edit out 30 seconds or more of me grinding on a black pepper grinder. All right, this is looking pretty good now. So what we want to do, and this is where things get a little weird, we just want to give this a very light coating of butter spray because we do want these to glaze a bit. Now, if you are going to be using real pork, pork made bacon, you'll skip that. But turkey bacon like this, which we're adding now, we need just a little bit more fat because we've got to kind of make a glaze here. And then, last two things, one, two dashers of W sauce and eight drops of liquid smoke. One. Toss to combine. Everything's been cooking a few minutes. I have tossed this a couple times, but let's give it a look. I still got the spurs on this and it's not quite enough, but at home for you, a nice medium high heat will get a pan of this size rip roaring hot. So basically what we're looking for here is that any excess moisture is gone. And then we want to see the development of just a little bit of char on our beans. So we're not there yet. Put my spatter shield back on and see where we're at with our rice. And it looks like this is cooked and ready for the resting phase. And how you know, most of you know how you know, when you pull it back to the bottom and you don't see any water running or pulling up, that's when you want to go ahead, cut your heat, clamp your lid on, and let it sit for about 10 minutes, stir it after five. So that's gonna go into its resting phase to finish up. Okay, we're back and I think our side dishes are done. Get stainless steel, I said. It'll be easy to clean, I said. It is easy to clean. But it's also easy to get dirty and look bad. Anyway, so we have our beans perfectly done, just a little roasty toasty. Bring it closer to the camera and give you a little look. That looks pretty wonderful, doesn't it? And then our rice, which has been chilling out for about 15 minutes. Now, folks, rices, especially when you're making rice with other things mixed in, they kind of follow the same order as eggs. Most people don't realize this. But if rice is done, when you cut the heat off, 
it's going to be overdone and gummy by the time you get it to the table. Much in the similar way that if eggs look completely done through or done to your liking in the pan, and then you're going to have overcooked eggs by the time you get to the table. So you always cut off rice. Again, my, my expertise, especially when dishes with rice like this, says that you cut off your heat when you no longer see water pulling up at the bottom when you push your ingredients to the side like this. Cut it off, and then you basically just... Leave the lid on and stir it every several minutes, and that'll get it to perfectly done, like this one is. Give you a close-up look of this in the pot. Wonderful vegetable and bacon jambalaya. And I wish I could explain the smell in here. It smells like a lot more than just bacon, but it smells like bacon and flavor and scents and greatness and all those types of things. So here's our finished bacon veggie jambalaya and bacon, smoked bacon, green beans is what I call them, even though the smoke in this question was liquid smoke. So let's give them a taste and see how they stack up against the other things here in bacon extravaganza. Have a look at that. Mm. That is delicious jambalaya. The only jambalaya I've ever made that was better than that was the time that I had real homemade small batch andouille sausage. And I also made it from scratch instead of the box. Spicy too, because I added that cayenne and then those uh, those peppers. I want all this bacon. All right, let's give these beans a try. Take a look at that. A little bit of almond, a little piece of onion, some bacon. Mmm. 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 C'est magnifique. That is wonderful. Now that contrasted to that, that has just a little bit of heat from that pinch of cayenne and that little bit of those chilies we put in there. Mmm. Wow. These are both great. Most of you have probably had the combination of bacon, green beans, onion, and almond before. This just takes that and turns the flavor component up to 11. Because that's what we do here on Cook It and Eat It. This is rich in the bacon. <laughs> like, I eat every bite is trying to grab two or three pieces of bacon. That's bacon, 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 bacon. That's what we're doing here on our bacon extravaganza. Either of these will pair well with those bacon wrapped stuffed chicken thighs you hopefully saw previous to that if not it's the video previous to this also go down below in the video description check out my recipe for the sweet pickled onions you're gonna want to make those too and we're about ready to get out of here there'll be just a little bit more of bacon extravaganza coming your way shortly but in the meantime and in between time I want to thank you for tuning in to cook it and eat it here on Jim Johnston reviews the world today and if you like my stuff please Go underneath, like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And hey, share this with your friends and family to help me grow the world. And from me to you, I want you all to know, be weird, be free, and most importantly, be independent.